What if I told you about calling me on a cell phone? Relax. Everything's in motion. Nothing can stop it now, so why don't you just get some sleep? Vice President Zoe Fields. Mrs. Fields died unexpectedly last Sunday while undergoing a routine surgical procedure. We begin tonight with our White House correspondent, Angela Brook. Crowds of well-wishers joined the international and national heads of state and industry this morning alongside friends and family of Vice President Zoe Fields, who all came to mark the sudden passing of one of Washington's most respected figures. The president gave a warm and what some might call an uncharacteristically emotional eulogy for his political ally and close personal friend. She was the only politician in this town who uh, I never heard any other politician say a single bad word about. And I have no doubt that had she been allowed to properly serve this country as vice president, she would have taken that experience and she would have gone on to become an extraordinary President. The president spoke with deep respect and admiration for his second in command and was joined at the service by both the first lady and their daughter, Alice. The vice president would normally ascend to the presidency upon the death, resignation, or removal of the president, but there is just no VP in waiting. The presidency and the country simply cannot constitutionally function without someone fulfilling this vital political role. The president gave a press conference today after the memorial in which he outlined his position on the nomination process. Well, I'm still grieving the loss last week of one of my closest and oldest friends. So yes, we will be appointing a new vice president very soon. Um, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anybody if party politics has to wait for a little while. It might even do us all some good. In the meantime, Speaker Bob Carson has graciously agreed to uh, take on some of the Vice President's official duties. And I'm truly grateful for his support this time. Although we hail from different parties, we've agreed to put partisanship aside, work together for the good of the country. Bob Carson, did you see that coming, Angela? Well, although clearly grateful to Speaker Bob Carson, there is no love lost between these men. And while it's not official, favorite for the position is Gavin Lawson, senator for New Mexico. A sad day and complicated tomorrow, no doubt, for the democratically elected leader of the free world. Uh, listen, have you given any more thought out Gavin Lawson for vice president? I mean, he, he, he is our best, worst choice. You know, his, his polling numbers are solid, and he will help with Hispanic and Southern votes. Let's bring him in quietly tomorrow, OK? We'll give him and his family 48 hours to get used to the idea, and then I'll announce the nomination Saturday. Yes, sir. Exciting happened while I was away? The usual, lots of heat, not much light. 
Amita got hold of an academic paper Lawson wrote about 20 years ago on Israel's position in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it came up when we vetted him. There's nothing in it. At least nothing that can't wait till I get some sleep. Where's Allie? Well, she's either in her room studying or she's standing on the street corner turning tricks. Oh, that's nice that she's getting out to meet people. <laughs> what do you want to do for a birthday? Nothing planned. Well, we should do something. How about we, uh... I'll have a bunch of her friends over, and then I'll call in a favor from Springsteen or Bon Jovi. <laughs> I realize she's not turning 80, right? Ah, oh, hairy middle-aged men playing guitars might be your thing. But I think she has other plans that are a little more age-appropriate. Uh, Mr. President. Andy? I'm sorry, sir. We have a situation. What's going on? An unresponsive passenger jet. It's on its way to New York City. Okay. All right. Let's go. Absolutely, Senator. I think we have a better chance of uh, getting the other side to agree if we meet halfway. I see. Well, I think I might be able to meet you halfway on that. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do that for a couple of days. But, uh, I hope to implement that very soon. Bye. Hi, Dad. Hello, Angel. Your mom tells me you've made plans for your birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to the St. Patrick's Day party at the Josephine Lounge with Mike and a few other friends. Okay, just remember, I cannot have you staggering drunk or stoned out of a nightclub in the early hours of the morning. Every phone has a camera, and that footage will be on TMZ before you even get back to the White House. So just. Use your judgment. For God's sakes, Dad! I'm just about the most recognizable teenager in the country. Just relax. It's not like I have sex with every guy I meet. Alice, okay, look, there are some things a teenage girl should just not joke about with her... <sighs> What's he done this time? The man treats me like I'm seven. What's he done now? It's just the way he talks to me. He doesn't credit me with any intelligence. Like, I get straight A's. I've never so much as touched a cigarette. I never get into any kind of trouble. For God's sake, I even keep my room clean. I'm a parent's dream, and he has to get all just say no on me. You finished? Yes. He worries about you, Allie. Like I worry about you. You know, you may find this hard to believe, but your dad was once a teenager himself, so... He knows a thing or two about what teenage boys get up to. Mike isn't like that. Great, then you could let Dad worry unnecessarily, can't you? You know, unlike other dads, yours is also the president. It automatically means that you and I are people of interest in the media and to the public. We have to be extra careful whether we like it or not, okay? No, he said you can go, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Which means he trusts you, right? I guess. Of course it does. We both do. Oh, we love you very much. I love you too. I just want us to be normal. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be nice. Just isn't easy when someone plays Hail to the Chief every time your dad walks in the room. <laughs> God, I hate that song. Oh, me too. <laughs> Probably shouldn't tell him that, though. No. Okay. <laughs> cell phone. Nothing can stop it now, so why don't you just get some sleep?
and gentlemen, is what we've been training for. But the pressure is on. I want everything set up in this entire building in the next five minutes, because this delightful place is your home. It's your fortress, and you will protect it with your lives. Our subterranean home this evening has 14 floors and a set of offices. So unless you're doing something very specific for me, split into your teams and clear this place floor by floor. This is Keaton. Firecracker has been taken. Agents are down. Come along, Alice. We've got a very big night.
Alert local and federal authorities. We need squads on the ground now. Why are you doing this? Don't worry, Alice. Everything's gonna be okay. Tracking? Yes, sir. That is a go. Full authorization. Got it. VIP abduction and operation, code 207A. Copy that, 2836. Base, this is chopper 23, zero ground movement. Copy that, 23. Report all further readings. Hold position. Implement the Bulwark Protocol. Lock down the White House. No one gets out, no one gets in, unless it's me. Mr. Speaker, get dressed, please. We need to take you to a secure location immediately. Someone tell me what's so damn urgent? Yes, the first family's been compromised, sir. Alice Reynolds has been kidnapped. The continuity of succession protocol has been implemented, and we're taking you to the Pentagon Situation Room, sir. What the hell? Senator, please come with us now. We're implementing the continuity of succession protocol. But please, Senator, come now. Yeah, just wait. You guys do realize that I'm not even the vice president yet, don't you? Yes, sir. But these are very unusual circumstances. All right, well, let's go. Mr. President. Mm. Mr. President. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Oh, Jesus, Andy. This had better be important. Yes, sir, I'm afraid it's very important. What is it? I'm sorry to say there's been an incident. What kind of incident? In New York at the nightclub that Alice was in. What happened? A lot of people have been shot and killed on the scene, sir. Oh my God. Alice's entire Secret Service detail has been murdered. All of them? All of them, Mr. President. What about Alice? Is she OK? We don't know. She's not on the scene. We assume she's been taken, but we don't have enough information yet. Some of her friends were still on scene, and I'm sorry to say some of her friends have been killed. But we have to assume she's the target of a terrorist kidnapping, sir. I'm very sorry, Rita. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for the president in the hall. Who exactly is on the scene at the moment? A squadron from the Navy Special Warfare Department is already there, Mr. President. A squadron from Delta Force is en route. Sir, I've dispatched the Secret Service's duty emergency response team from the White House to the scene. The off-duty team is en route to the White House, where we've drafted in troops in the meantime. Mr. President, FBI tactical teams are already mobilized. Special Agent Dan Murphy will lead on the ground. And Mr. President, I spoke to the mayor. He said the NYPD already secured the exterior. Who the hell could do this? Mr. President, it's far too early for us to be sure about Well, anything. this is a national security situation, so we're going to need information quickly. Mr. President, I hate to say this, but at this moment, 
This is just a spree shooting. I mean, I know it's tragic, but the intel we have... What about Alice? Oh, that's a kidnapping, sir. I mean, I understand that Alice is the victim, but based on the intel we have, there's no reason for us to think that our national security is at risk, at least not yet. Andy, if I think there's a reason, then our national security is at risk. Do I make myself clear? Absolutely, sir. And where the hell is everyone else? Good morning, Mr. President. Mrs. Reynolds, I really don't know what to say except to assure you that Alice and both of you are in my prayers. Thank you, Bob. When the news broke, I initiated a lockdown in the White House. I also invoked the continuity of succession protocol. I mean, at the time, we weren't sure if the threat was limited to Alice or it extended to you or the First Lady. No, I want everyone from your departments out of bed and either on the street, at their desks, working their contacts. It's been almost a full hour, for Christ's sakes, and we still don't know anything. Do you think that this might be perceived as being excessive? I mean, every member of the FBI, sir? Andy, what are we talking about? 30 people dead at that nightclub. Eight federal agents have lost their lives, and my daughter is missing. Now, we need to take some decisive action here. Do we know who these terrorists are? No, ma'am, I'm sorry, we don't. Now, those who escaped say that they were almost likely white, but that they were wearing masks. Be a near He's too close to, to this. You can't think straight with his daughter in danger like that. Our best bet. He may have to invoke the 25th. I hope to resolve this before it the comes FBI to that. It's already come to that. Just think about it. taking photographs and they'll try facial recognition again. But until then, or until someone claims responsibility or issues some demands, we just don't know who these people are or what they want. This is a shambles. We have got to take control of this nightmare. We need to get Alice back. This is Inspector Lewis. Nobody is to enter this building. Do not enter the building. We don't know who these people are or what they want. We do know they are heavily armed and extremely dangerous. I'm on the southwest corner by the diner. Report any activity and await further instructions. Inspector Haley Lewis. Inspector Lewis. Special Agent Charge Dan Murphy, nice to meet you. Likewise. I've been expecting you guys. Yeah, well, we're obviously taking jurisdiction off. <laughs> You're welcome to it. This is already a mess, and it's only going to get messier. Hopefully we can work together. Whatever you need. So what do we got? Still sorting that out. Witnesses report Alice Reynolds was in the club. We found her bodyguards dead, along with some people thought to be her friends. Alice's best friend Louise and her boyfriend Mike also seem to be missing from the scene. It doesn't add up. It's like they're trying to hide out, huh? Just the opposite. They're making a big scene like they want to get noticed. We got people looking at cameras from the street, see if we can get any more information. Are there any other exits to this garage? All blocked off. Got to bring a blue around the whole block. Nobody's getting in or out. Doesn't make sense. Hell no. If I was going to kidnap the president's kid, I'd want to get the hell out of New York as quickly as possible. Not back myself into a corner. Mr. President. What are you doing here? Hello, Mr. Speaker. I ordered the Secret Service to collect Senator Lawson to neutralize any potential threat there might be to him. But he doesn't have any constitutional place in any of Come this. Come on, Bob. Just keep your priorities straight, all right? Gavin, hi. We're wrapping this up, but the Pentagon guys will fill you in on what little we know. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. President, th there's no easy way to broach this subject. But I urge you to seriously consider invoking the 25th Amendment and temporarily stepping aside, sir. I am 
not going to set that precedent, Andy. Presidents Reagan and Bush Jr. already invoked the 25th Amendment and transferred power to their vice president temporarily, sir. That's so they could both get goddamn colonoscopies. They were physically incapacitated, Andy. I am not. I'm not setting a precedent that binds all the successors of this office. What would be the grounds? Mental illness? But these people have not stated what their demands were yet. And when they do, sir, we need a person making those decisions based on being president of the United States and not Alice's father. He's both. I know. Honey, you're both. Are you going to recuse yourself? No. Rita. No one else is going to stand up for Alice. Rita, it's okay. Alternatives. Not if you're going to leave out the 25th Amendment, sir. Sir, look, you're not incapacitated, but you do have a conflict of interest. Recuse yourself. Sign your power over to the vice president temporarily. This is the best advice I possibly could give you, sir. Okay, Andy, I want you to partially lift the lockdown on the White House. I want everyone in the bunker as soon as possible. The president should be surrounded by his advisors at a time like this. Of course, sir. Have the Secret Service send some men to the President Pro Temp of the Senate's home. Get him to the Pentagon Situation Room with the line of succession going. But Andy. Sir. He's a 78-year-old man. Let's wake him up gently. Last thing we need to do is add to the body count tonight. Not giving the guy a heart attack. Of course, sir. Andy. Sir. Wake up a federal judge and tell him to get his ass down here. Yes, sir. Special Agent Murphy? Yeah. Don Nelson, Deputy Director of the Secret Service. Hi. What can I do for you? My emergency response team and I are here, and we are taking command of this situation. Really? Yes, that's correct. And we greatly appreciate the FBI's assistance and cooperation, along with that of local law enforcement inspector Lewis. But as this is a matter concerning the safety of a member of the first family, it falls within the services jurisdiction. Listen, I, I don't have the time or energy right now to stand here and argue with you about this. This is a bureau investigation. So until I hear differently from my director or the Department of Justice, I'm going to get on with doing my job. All right, sweetie. You're up. Let's go. Come on. Come on! <laughs> Alice. You are now officially the most important person in the room. Why? Because I need you. I need you to make a video with me. This is a message to Daddy. No. Pardon you? No, I won't do it. <clears throat> One more time, because... I have a damaged eardrum in. I'm not doing the video. You see, I thought you said that, and I was giving you a chance to retract it about what happens when Alice doesn't do what I want. <laughs> My nerve is gonna hold much longer than yours. Do you believe me? What's your name, beautiful? Louise. Louise. What a beautiful, beautiful name. How old are you, Louise? Wow. So young. So unaware of how precarious life can be, Alice. Hmm? You like Alice? I think Alice would do anything for you, Louise. Yeah. 
She wouldn't. It's okay. It's all right. Such a waste. Now, Alice, if we cooperate, Alice, sweetheart, Alice, Alice, Alice. I have not got time for this. Bring the boyfriend. Come on, you're up. Let's go. Get your hands off me. Come on. Get your hands off me. Who do you think's going to give in first, you or me? <laughs> OK. I didn't even have to ask him his name, Alice. I already know it. What I am going to do is count from five to one. Five. Four. No, OK. I'll do it. You'll do what? I'll do the video. Take him back. Sorry to say that our attempts at running facial recognition against the footage from the club have failed. All but one of the group had their faces covered by a balaclava or a mask, and the one man who wasn't disguised hasn't returned to match. Are you a prince? Well, there we may be in luck, sir. Now, the footage shows the unmasked man drinking from a glass of champagne, though all the agencies are running those prints right now. I need to see this footage. Mr. President, I don't know if that's a good idea. You, you don't need to subject yourself to that, sir. Have you seen it? Yes, sir. Does it show Alice being taken? Yes, sir. Show it to me now. I need to see it. I need to be able to tell Rita that Alice was alive when she was taken. Absolutely, sir. Get it up right over here. Mr. President, have you given any more consideration to what I suggested in the Oval Office, sir? Let's watch this footage first, Annie. Yes, sir. Let's get the new security in place. Mr. President, we have no new information. My name is Alice Reynolds. It seems we are in the middle of a terrible tragedy tonight, but all we can confirm at this point is that there has been a shooting, and witnesses are reporting... Alice Reynolds, the only daughter to the president, was in fact inside the club. I know. No celebrating her birthday. For staff tonight, just make yourselves at home in a seat. I'll be with you in just a sec. The situation has the potential to go from bad to worse. Hey, what do you see? You want a burger? Yes, sir. All right, get another burger for 13. How are you guys doing there? You some more cup? Fine. All right. Any idea what's going on across the street? No, sir. No, not at all. How long is it going to take? To upload the video? Uh, the upload is pretty fast, so it should only take one or two minutes. Should? No, it will only take one or two minutes. One or two minutes, Nate. Which one is it? It's uh, two minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. Fine. On your marks, set, go. Where'd you meet your wife? We met at school. Ah. High school sweethearts, eh? <laughs> I'm always interested to hear when people meet their significant others. 90 seconds. You know, I think you're forgetting, mate, that uh, my guy is sat next to your wife. I think he's probably bouncing your son on his knee. But if you don't get this done in the next few seconds, he's probably going to put a bullet through their brains. It's done, it's done, it's done. Well, I don't know. You had 10 seconds to spare. See? You can work to a deadline. Come on. I want to watch some TV. Do you think we could get access to the news channels down here? I've got a feeling there's a news item we're all going to want to see real soon, Nate.
my God. This is Channel 9, breaking news. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking news story from right here in New York City, where a hostage situation is underway. Our reporter on the ground has obtained the shocking footage, which appears to show Alice Reynolds, the daughter of President Paul Reynolds, being held against her will by captors whose identity is yet unknown. I repeat, this footage is of a very distressing nature. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. My name is Alice Reynolds. You need to see this right away. Dad, I'm being held by the National Alliance of New Justice. They don't want to hurt or kill any more people. But as they have shown, they are willing and able to do so. Their first demand is the immediate release. God damn it. President, I think it's time. Do we have a judge? Yes, sir. He's waiting upstairs. Should I bring him down? No. We're going to do this in the Oval Office. The world needs to see that the United States government is still functioning properly in accordance with the Constitution. I agree, sir. Uh, Speaker Carson, Senator Larson, please come with us. Do not put a video like that on air. As soon as you knew what it was, you should have came to us first. But I... I... You, you have no idea if it was genuine. You have no idea who it came from. Someone threw it at me. Someone threw it at you. That's an impeccable source. You know, it's bad enough a parent has to see anything like that about their child on TV. But in this situation, it's a threat to national security. Did, did it ever cross your mind what that would do to the president? You know, you're going to have to learn the right way and the wrong way to win an Emmy. Just take a moment here. All right, Miss Owens, you really should have informed the authorities about the video. You think? Yes, you would have lost some time getting it to air, but we would have made sure that you retained exclusivity. Sir, you need to take this. You know, you're lucky I didn't throw your ass in jail. Can I have the original footage so we can examine it, please? Yeah. Thank you. Here you go, sir. This is Murphy. Who's this? <laughs> you mean you don't know who I am yet? Seems like the words security and intelligence don't really belong in the same sentence as each other in this country, do they? You called me, I assume you want something. Well, first and foremost, pal, I want you to understand that it is a very, very foolish idea to try and get inside this building. And secondly, somewhat more importantly, you've seen the video. You know she's alive. So if I don't get everything I asked for in the next three and a half hours, then a lot of people are gonna die. And? You should know I've got enough explosives down here to level the entire block. So don't test me on it! Three and a half hours. The clock is ticking. Get back to work. Sit. That boy's recorded the call. They're sending in the recording right now. Did he make any demand? No, not yet. He gave us a time limit. He's given us three and a half hours before he'll trigger the bombs. Okay. I'll listen to the tape. We'll talk again soon. Yes, sir. Bob, if this situation drags on any longer, it's going to take a battalion of lawyers to duke out who's in charge once Gavin's appointment of vice president has been confirmed. So, gentlemen, please, for the good of the country, work together. Understood? Of course, sir. Yes, Mr. President. It's okay. Shh. 
It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. She's alive. It's good news. We didn't know that five minutes ago. And she's strong, right? You saw that. It takes a lot of guts to leave a script like that. Try to save other people's lives. She's gonna be okay. <laughs> but listen, I have to do this. All right? Mr. President, this is District Judge Philip Adams. Judge Adams, thank you for coming. We good to go, Eddie? Yes, sir, we are. Good. Judge Adams, who does what, please? Well, Mr. Speaker, sir, the first thing is we have you sign a letter of resignation from the House. Now, I have uh, taken the liberty of drafting something for you, but uh, you're absolutely free to compose one of your own. I am not much of a wordsmith, sir. But this uh, looks good enough for me. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. President. And now, sir, I have a letter for you. This letter to Congress temporarily relinquishes the power and the duties of the presidency. The moment you sign it, it becomes effective. Please, Paul, don't rush into this. In the grand scheme of things, this has to be done. I don't like it, but let's do it. Speaker, please raise your right hand and place your left hand on the Bible. Of course. Repeat after me. I, Robert Willis Carson, do solemnly swear. I, Robert Willis Carson, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. If you do, you can get out of here. I'm gonna make you a cast iron promise, President Carson. If anything happens to my daughter tonight, I'm gonna make it my life's work to make sure that history reflects the fact that your first action on briefly taking office was to sit around with your thumb up your ass for two hours while you admired the word president before your name. Someone's coming out! It's all right, you're safe now. Just keep coming towards us. I can get us out of this. I promise. I'll work with you all tonight because you're all I have and you're better than nothing. But when the sun rises on the Carson presidency, I'm gonna want my own team in this office and by my side. Mr. President. 